This podcast is brought to you by Kempower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast, where we talk everything EV and EV adjacent. As I like to say, I'm your host, Francie, and I hope you're having a great evening, afternoon, or morning whenever you are catching me. And thank you also for tuning in, by the way. We appreciate your support over here at the Out of Spec team, whether you've been a longtime listener or a watcher, or if this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. Widespread EV adoption and the charging infrastructure required to support it is not simply going to happen because we want it to, and I know a lot of us just really want it to, but it requires tremendous investment of time and effort and, of course, dollars. It is a new technology, a newly advancing industry, and federal, state, and local grants and policy are essential in building out a comprehensive network network of reliable EV charging, and this is certainly still a work in progress, as many of us know. On Thursday, January 11th of 2024, just a couple days ago, the Biden administration announced an additional $623 million in grants to continue building out the United States electric vehicle charging network. So let's see what this is all about. I want to start off by saying that, of course, this is an announcement from the current U.S. president's administration, the Biden-Harris administration. And I thought maybe it was just good to note and put into perspective this administration's approach compared to the previous administration's approach, the Trump-Pence administration's approach to EV infrastructure. So during the Trump administration, there were initiatives and funding programs related to EV infrastructure, but I'll note that they objectively are not as comprehensive or prominent as those introduced by the Biden-Harris administration. So these include the Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Loan Program, the ATVM Loan Program, and of course, we're talking federal stuff and regulations, so there's going to be a good bit of acronyms and long names that I will get right every time. So this program was established to provide loans to automotive manufacturers, actually, for the development of advanced technology vehicles, which, of course, includes electric vehicles. And while it wasn't exclusively focused on EVs or EV infrastructure, it aimed to support the production of advanced vehicles, which EVs arguably are. The infrastructure grants under the Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act, or the FAST FAST Act, was signed into law in 2015 during the Obama administration, but it was implemented during Trump's term. And it included provisions for grants to support infrastructure projects, which could include EV charging stations. However, the focus was broader, encompassing various transportation-related projects. Like I said, just a couple days ago, the Biden-Harris administration announced $623 million in grants to support the expansion of the United States EV charging network. A certain goal of this initiative is also to create American jobs, create a made-in-America charging network, and enhance the accessibility of EV charging for drivers across residential, work, and public spaces like shopping malls. And the administration also has a broader goal of promoting the build-out of at least 500,000 publicly available chargers by 2030. And we've talked about the number that is projected to be needed of level two and fast charging. And then of course, of course, at home charging, but really thinking publicly available chargers to meet the EVs that are projected to be on the road by 2030, 2040, which is many, many, many millions more than we have today. So what are these grants intended to do exactly? And who can apply and be awarded these grants who has been awarded? So the grants are funded by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Laws Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Discretionary Grant Program the CFI program, I'm going to call it for short. And that is a mouthful, of course. And this will support 47 projects in 22 states and Puerto Rico, resulting in approximately 7,500 EV charging ports. The projects align with the Justice 40 initiative, with over 70% of the funding directed towards disadvantaged communities. And for those who don't know, the Justice 40 initiative is a federal government initiative in the U.S. aimed at addressing environmental and economic disparities in disadvantaged communities. And it was introduced by President Biden through Executive Order 14008, titled Tackling the Climate Crisis at Home and Abroad, which he signed on January 27th, 2021, just after taking office. 
the key mission of the Justice 40 initiative is to ensure that at least 40% of the overall benefits from federal investments in climate and clean energy programs flow to historically marginalized and disadvantaged communities, communities that are characterized by higher levels of pollution, lower income, and a history of underinvestment. And research has shown that it is these communities and people who are disproportionately affected by environmental degradation and climate change, which is a global trend as well. And there's nothing wrong with helping our neighbors, if you ask me. The U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg emphasized the importance of accessible and reliable EV chargers. Who isn't nowadays? He also pointed to the opportunity for career paths and job growth in manufacturing, installation, and maintenance of this critical infrastructure. And we have a recent podcast that I did that I will link in the show notes with EV recruitment and uh, Raymond and Ray from that team, the CEO and then the director of sales that talked all about recruiting for this industry, for this growing industry in EVs and everything EV adjacent. And uh, definitely give that a listen. There's great advice for those looking to build teams and to be on a team. And also just to get an idea of how do we recruit for an industry that is so fresh and growing so rapidly. The Federal Highway Administration is allocating $311 million to 36 community projects, as it's characterized, and $312 million to 11 corridor recipients, so community and corridor projects. They're focusing on filling the gaps in the national charging network. Good approach. Who is getting these grants? Okay, so grants include, I'm going to go through the list now of what they have listed on their uh, press release, their announcement from the White House. $10 $10 million to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection for EV charging stations in multifamily housing near transit stations. This is pretty cool. $15 million to the Maryland Clean Energy Center for 87 charging stations, including workforce development programs. Interesting. $70 million to the North Central Texas Council of Governments for five hydrogen fueling stations in major cities. This is cool. I think Texas is a really interesting. Uh, kind of petri dish for this kind of infrastructure, not necessarily just hydrogen, but they are, you know, they do a good bit with renewable energies as well and um, would love to dive into that more. But hydrogen fueling stations in major cities, which of course we've talked about the different use cases for hydrogen powered EVs. And um, we're not sold that personally, I'm not sold. I don't think a lot of people are that this is the best option for passenger vehicles, but for larger industrial uses this is really cool it's already used a lot and um you know like with forklifts and and stuff so it's just an interesting thing that okay they're getting 70 million dollars for five hydrogen fueling stations so those are pretty expensive as well 15 million dollars to the county of contra costa in california for 52 fast chargers and 60 level two chargers at library branches gotta love that libraries are one of the last free third spaces in our society. And um, third spaces are a really interesting topic that I find uh, to investigate and see how we're going to keep them alive. $15 million to the Energy Northwest for 40 fast chargers and 12 level two chargers in rural Washington and Oregon. $12 million to the city of Mesa, Arizona for 48 chargers, e-bike and e-scooter docks with solar canopies. Love a bit of micro mobility in here where we want to really investigate scooters and micro mobility with the out of spec team. And if I wasn't so busy with the podcast. I would love to do the out of spec scoots idea. Um, I also love motorcycles and hope to get an electric bike or, you know, motorcycle soon. So that's pretty cool. A lot of um, solar canopy initiative as well there, which is, of course, you know, maybe not enough to charge an EV, uh, but it can collect that renewable energy resource in a battery storage thing. So I would hope that that's what's happening. I'm not really sure what they're doing with the power there, but would love to look into all these projects. And then $1.4 million to the to the Chilkoot Indian Association in Alaska for EV charging stations in Haines. So not as much as the other groups, but we do see that some of this is being allocated to Native American tribes, which is uh, very cool as well. Boulder County was awarded $4.9 million, not directly relevant to this topic, but I did live there for five years and we have a lot of team out in that area. So I'm definitely interested to see how these projects come along. You may be asking at this point, okay, wait, so 
How does this differ from the NEVI program, a.k.a. the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, also led by the Biden-Harris administration? Great question, because they are different. The CFI program, which I have just described, complements but is completely different from the $5 billion NEVI program. While both programs contribute to the expansion of EV infrastructure, the CFI program focuses on a broader range of projects through competitive grants, and the NEVI program specifically targets the development of high-speed EV chargers along highways, and every state gets a portion of this. And Every state has already had their first plan, NEVI plan, submitted and approved, which we have covered on other podcasts. And we will continue to track. The first NEVI site went live in Ohio just at the end of last year, 2023. One quote from the U.S. Transportation Deputy Secretary, Polly Trottenberg, who is serving as uh, the deputy under Pete Buttigieg since April of 2021 said, from my time working at the local level, I know that finding electric vehicle charging in a community is different from finding charging along highways. So maybe our work is finally getting through to them. No, I'm not trying to poke too much fun at a quote taken from who knows where, but it does seem more like our leaders need to continue to immerse themselves in the EV lifestyle if they're going to continue to be an advocate for it. I think it should be a requirement at least for EV company execs to drive an EV on the regular as their daily commuter. And I know that I'm throwing rocks in a glass house as I'm yet to own an EV, but I'm in quite a different situation than a high EV exec or an administrative leader as well, making big decisions about how to build out our EV charging infrastructure. And I have to make this decision a little bit more intentionally, but I do believe 2024 is my year. Fingers crossed. I digress. So in conclusion, the CFI program supports President Biden's goals of achieving net zero emissions by 2050 and promoting clean transportation opportunities for all Americans, expanding EV infrastructure, reducing carbon pollution, and fostering job opportunities as well in clean transportation, which is super important if we're going to make this transition, make more opportunities for our people. These are all things that sound great, and we're going to see more and more federal, state, and local initiatives and policies and money push towards these sort of missions and goals, and it will be great to track these as time goes on. We'll do our part over here to note the progress of this program and update you all to see what happens next year as well after the next U.S. presidential election. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know what stood out to you about this story. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you next time on the Out of Spec Podcast.